The TEM, or Transmission Electron Microscope, is a highly sophisticated tool used by scientists to study and characterize materials down to the atomistic level. TEM can provide atomic resolution images of materials and their defects, diffraction patterns of crystals, as well as spectroscopic data. Details finer than 0.2 nanometers can be observed using TEM, which is quite good considering the smallest feature the human eye can resolve is about 0.1 millimeters. In a high resolution image, single atoms can be easily distinguished. Electron microscopes were developed due to the limited image resolution of light microscopes, which is imposed by the wavelength of visible light. TEM uses electrons instead of visible light. This microscope is only possible because of the electron's wave-like behavior, with a wavelength substantially smaller than that of visible light. Electrons can be controlled by magnetic fields and can interact with materials, producing a wide range of signals that can be detected. In general, a TEM can be roughly thought of as a visible light microscope, which employs electrons instead of visible light, and a system of lenses to control all the basic operational functions of the instrument. In this case, however, electromagnetic instead of glass lenses need to be employed. While in the visible light microscope, the lenses have to be physically moved or changed to control all the basic functions of the instrument, such as focusing the image or changing the magnification. TEM electromagnetic lenses are fixed and operational functions are controlled by changing the strength of their magnetic fields. Lenses are also assisted by apertures that are inserted to improve lens performance by narrowing the beam or limiting their collection angles, resulting in images with better contrast and resolution. Nowadays, most TEMs use lanthanum hexaboride thermionic sources to generate the electron beam. Thermionic means that when a material is heated to a high enough temperature, electrons can reach sufficient energy to overcome the work function barrier and leak out of the surface. Since human eyes aren't sensitive to electrons, to observe the images, the electron's intensity distribution generated by the specimen must be translated into a visible light distribution. Forward scattered electrons are digitized and then projected on a fluorescent viewing screen or a computer screen. Due to the strong scattering of electrons in air or any other gas, ultra-high vacuum is required inside the stage in order to obtain a controlled and coherent electron beam and also to keep the specimen clean. The vacuum inside the stage of a typical TEM is on the order of 10 to the minus 5 pascals. TEM specimen has to be electron transparent, meaning that it has to be thin enough to transmit sufficient electrons such that the intensity can be detected beyond the sample. Usually the thickness of a TEM specimen is lower than 100 nanometers. To insert the specimen into the microscope stage, it is placed on a specimen holder and then the assembly is inserted into the TEM. Once inside, the specimen holder can be moved laterally to look at different areas, vertically to focus the image, and tilted to look along a particular direction. Let's now talk briefly about one of the most important capabilities of the TEM, to produce diffraction patterns. When an electron interacts with the potential of an atom in a crystal lattice, it can be diffracted. Electrons will diffract in all directions, and because of the electron's wave-like behavior, a diffraction pattern will arise. As it turns out, whenever the distance between planes of a crystal with respect to the angle of the incident beam is equal to a multiple of the wavelength of the electron, constructive interference occurs and the diffraction along that direction is the strongest. Conversely, electrons diffracted in other directions will experience deconstructive interference. This is the origin of the diffraction patterns observed in the TEM. A series of lenses is used to collect all electrons diffracted along the same direction to a single point on the output plane. In this way, a point in the diffraction pattern represents a family of planes in the real crystal lattice. This is known as the reciprocal space lattice. Diffraction patterns provide information about the crystal structure, specimen shape, and lattice parameters that allow scientists to perform crystallographic analysis.